Do you like speed? No, really. I mean, Ricky Bobby NASCAR all hyped up a Mountain Dew with a cougar in the passenger seat shaking big levels of speed? If that mental image brought your adrenaline from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat, that I've got the build for you. All right, hello and welcome. This is the Shadow Daggers Blade Dancer build guide. And it is my favorite build of all time. It still stands there. I do love the Shadow Dagger Falconer and maybe it will dethrone it over time. But right now this is still my absolute favorite and an incredible build for a cycle start, but just an incredible build for really any content that's in the game. This gets S tier or A tier on our tier list for every bit of content. There is nothing it can't handle very well. And it's insanely fun if you like speed, and I love speed. So let's go ahead and get into what this build is, uh, what makes it so fast and so good, how it how it is set up, etc. So we're going to start with why it's so fast and why it does good damage. So we do our damage from Shadow Daggers, which are a sub-skill that's procced by other skills, including Shadow Cascade and Synchronize Strike, um, and more importantly, or most importantly, Umbral Blades. The rotation that allows us to proc these Shadow Daggers is really where the speed comes in, because we only need to do Synchronize Strike and Shift. Shift will proc it itself. Synchronized Strike will proc a lot more. We, shift is our movement ability, and we can actually clear most of an entire map just using Shift and watching things die behind us as Umbral Blades spin and hit things and then proc Shadow Daggers, and that causes them to no longer exist. Shift is also an incredibly fast skill on its own with an additional 50% movement speed built in for 1.5 seconds. And we can get the cooldown of that down to below 2.5 seconds, which allows us to have an additional 50% movement speed most of the time. And of course, shift being a movement ability, it goes after 2.5 seconds, makes it very, very fast. We do that partially through having a smoke weaver on, which gives us cooldown recovery for it. We can run two, we generally don't need to, it is an option. But for this one, we actually preferred a little bit of damage in here from our sword, so we don't run to, but that is something we can do. So Smoke Weaver, a big part of the build, but very much not needed. This build does not need any uniques. It likes Smoke Weaver a lot. It really likes some other, only a couple more, really. It doesn't need any of them. It really, really doesn't. You can play this effectively from very early in the game when you start to pick up Shadow Daggers. Level 16 is when you get Umbra Blades. This build is set up for about level 50 or 60. But you can play it very early, and it never really requires gear to, to really get going, and then it just absolutely takes off. This is actually the fastest leveling build. Speedrunners have proved this. Tarek is the fastest speedrunner of the game, and he's done this. He's gotten to Empowered Monoliths in under four hours with a similar setup. Probably not exactly the same, but pretty close to this. So let's go ahead and get into like the pros and cons about the build, and um, then we'll get into the skills and passives and then and then the gear. So the pros are it's actually a tanky build. This is not an easy thing, easy build to kill, especially if you go low life later. It's exceptionally fast, as we mentioned. It has very good damage and it doesn't struggle with any of the content in the game. Tier four um, dungeons, it can do them. It can do corruption pushing. Of course, it can do speed farming. It can do everything. As far as cons, there's not really a lot of cons to it, but here's what we have. It can feel out of control when you first start playing it and really get it going. Uh, you are like dashing in, dashing out, dashing in, dashing out consistently. And for a player who's not used to that, it's easy to dash into something bad, uh, like a telegraphed attack and find yourself in trouble. If you don't have up a silver shroud for guaranteed dodge or don't happen to dodge it, it could be a problem. But once you get used to it, it's not an issue. Uh, you'll learn how to manage that. And then it's very smooth. It does have some mana management. You will need some mana regen on your gear and you will need to manage how often you sync strike and shift if you don't have enough mana to make sure that you don't run out. You can then just shift to get more mana. It's 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 good, but there is a little bit there. It is pretty small though once you get the gear going. You are vulnerable when not moving on this build, especially if you have Wings of Argentis between that and a passive that gives you 25% damage reduction while moving. If you are not moving, you will get hurt 
The good news is there are very few times in this build that you should not be should be not moving. Even the sync strike um, shift combination, those are both movement skills. So you are still moving when you do them. So this is a build where that should be on almost all of the time. And you can strategically choose when to do something like drop a smoke bomb or a decoy to make sure that you're not going to get hit when you do that. The last thing is max maximizing the builds does require uniques. This is a pretty standard con for a lot of builds. This is not any different, especially with Smoke Weaver, Siphon of Anguish, which is easy to get, but Wings of Argentis, especially if you want a one LP one, could be very challenging to get. Not necessary, but if you want to max it, you need those. All right, that's the pros and cons. Let's talk about the skills. Umbral Blades is the biggest damage dealer that we have. And the way this works, this is an interaction that a lot of people don't understand in some ways. So we are doing um, our shadow daggers through lethal darkness. This means when um, when number blades hits, it will apply a shadow dagger. And we use cacophony of steel to make it spin in place. So it can continuously hit enemies and then loathing to make it home. Steel torrent will give you additional duration and area on that. When you are shifting... There's a particular way that you need to proc this that people get confused by, and that's you need to have Umbral Remnant, which causes shadows to drop Umbral Blades when they expire. So you need a shadow that will expire, and that's where Shift is going to come in. We'll come back to Shift after we talk about this as well. We're going to go back to Umbral Blades, but this is important. So you're going to drop um, you're going to drop Umbral Blades with Umbral Remnant, but you need it to expire. Well, we need to go take Lasting Presence to create a shadow, and then we actually need to take... Dancing shadows to create that shadow, except for that shadow cascade to go off, which is what causes it to expire. So you take these two points in shift, and then you take this point in umbral remnant, remnant, and that's how you expire them, and that's how you create umbral blades by proccing them. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, we also take cold snap strike for chill chance. This is only for chill chance. We don't care that we're converting this to cold damage as far as damage goes, because umbral blades is not doing our damage. Shadow Daggers is. An alternative option is to go Explosive Blades. And this is a viable option. In our testing, when you shift through an Echo, don't stop. This is a better option. If you want to Shadow Cast, or excuse me, um, if you want to Sync Strike Shift through it, meaning you're going to stop at like every pack, Sync Strike and Shift, not generally recommended, but if you wanted to do it that way, then Explosive Blades would be the better option. At High Corruption, this may be a better choice. It is still not entirely sure or clear that that's, that is the case. But for most content and the way most players should play this build, if they want to be efficient after lots of testing by myself and others, including Tarek, a, a speedrunner, uh, this is the actual fastest setup that you're going to get. Okay, a lot of Umbral Blades, I apologize, but this is one of the most misunderstood things of the setup. Let's go into Sync Strike. So Sync Strike is going to allow you to basically jump on an enemy and cause a lot of Shadow Daggers to occur because you're going to Shadow Dagger and hit with it and also create a bunch of shadows that you can then shift and cause um, them all to do a, um, a Shadow Cascade, which causes them to expire, drops Umbra Blades, etc. So you're going to want the Shadow Dagger and hit, you're going to want the extra shadows, and you're going to want... The um, shadows jump inward for better single target. We're also going to take Crimson Storm to get additional damage over time reduction. Now, one thing that also confuses players is this gives you additional shadows, but Cacophony of Steel limits you to three active blade storms, and they think these are not useful because of that. But the reality is it will actually create five and two will expire almost immediately, but those can still hit things when they're created. And then the other three will stay up. So this is still a valuable node to take. Next up, we have Shift, a very important part of the build, of course. This is our movement, but it's also the applicator of our Umbral Blades. We are going to go through Velocity into Momentum to take that big 50% movement speed buff I was talking about into Lasting Presence and Dancing Shadows, which is how we create that Umbral Blades interaction. By the way, Shadow Cascades, you're going to see, also does a good bit of damage with um, Shadow Dagger, so it's not useless here at all. Then we're going to take Swift Recovery for some mana use into Shadow Slip for invulnerability while shifting, which is big, especially to get away from some like boss mechanics. If you have that invulnerability, you can actually just dodge right through them. Very powerful. And then Elusive is also a really powerful node, giving you 80 dexterity 
or excuse me, 80 dodge rating per dexterity. And if you're stacking enough dexterity, that's a tremendous amount of dodge that will make it very, very difficult for you to get hit um, for that one second after. So this gives you quite a bit of time where you're almost unhittable. We finally, we finish up with going through Unseen Strike and Consumed by Shadow. This is a very non-important part of it, but there's honestly not much left to take here. So we get a little bit of an execute that won't do much, but it is there and it will help a little bit. Next up, we've got Shadow Cascade. This is what's getting procced by our shift interaction with both Sync Strike and Umbral Blades. And for this one, we're going to go into Dagger Dance, causing him to be thrown all the way through to Shadow Elegance so that we get additional Shadow Dagger procs from using this skill. We also want more duration and range, so just so they go out further and hit more enemies. This is important, but the most important thing here is actually Onslaught and Fight in the Shadows. This is how you're going to be able to continuously generate more mana so that you don't run out this combined with your mana regen on your on your gear is how you can maintain this rotation without having to directly cast umbral blades finally we're going to go up and take um incapacitate which is our only source of frailty and very valuable that we can take it here and not put it on our gear the last thing we have is smoke bump this has actually changed from the previous iteration where we would take knives in the dark to get shadow dagger uh, procs from it Unfortunately, 70%, even for every half second, chance to do this is very low compared to the other things that we do. This is not actually providing much damage at all. So what we're better off doing is just going and taking smoke blades like we normally would, but also smoke blades, by the, by the way, is a huge damage buff for, uh, for this build. You're also going to see at 1.0, oh, this is changing from increased damage to added damage. Not going to change much here. Really, it's still really viable. We still want to take it. And then we're going to take Moonlight Bomb for the Silver Shroud stack. Silver Shroud's a guaranteed dodge. Incredibly powerful, especially if you use it properly. And we're going to take um, Shrouded in Darkness and Rapid Concealment to get a bunch of Dusk Shroud, which is going to give us Glancing Blow and Dodge Rating, so very good as well. And finally, we'll take Thick Smoke to slow enemies down a little bit while we're in there, so it's easier for us to navigate around them while we stay in our Smoke Bomb. That's our skills. Let's now move on to passives. There are a good number of passives that are valuable here. Let's go through the most important ones. We have Twin Blade for our uh, Dual Wield. We need to take this. Evasion is at 25% damage taken while moving. It also has increased dodge rating. Seriously powerful note here. So is Agility, which gives us haste on hit chance. That's a 30% move speed that we can have up pretty much all the time. But also, we get 1% increased damage per 1% move speed, and we will be consistently over 100 into even close to 150 uh, uh, move speed, which means we're going to have 100 to 150% increased damage just from these five points in this node. That is an insanely good node for us. Next up, let's take a look at, um, we have all in here, which is 75% crit multi, but less damage dealt by non-crits. We don't care about our non-crits at all because Shadow Dagger is a guaranteed crit. So this is a very powerful node for us as well. We love once, which is 16 melee fizz and 16 throwing fizz. We get both of those because Shadow Dagger is tagged as melee and throwing. So it's actually 32 added damage plus 160 dodge rating if hit recently. That also applies to Swift Assassin where it says it gives 8 physical. That's on throwing, melee, and bow. Well, we're both melee and throwing, so it's actually 16 damage, um, not 8 damage. We also really like Shroud of Dusk. The chance to gain Dust Shroud when hit, not very valuable, but 80 health. Health is hard to come by as a rogue. This is a really good node for us. We want one point in Argent Veil vale for that Silver Shroud stack. That's two Silver Shroud stacks that we have that we can play off of. Very, very good. Blood Dance is a um, the primary source of our melee leech. Also excellent. And then these nodes here are really strong as well. We have a Suvin's Pack. Increased damage without full health and dodge rating. And then perfection, confidence, and exuberance work together to give us lots of armor and dodge rating uh, when we're not getting hit, which is most of the time it's very hard to actually hit this build. The other things of note, Falconer is new. We are taking some points in it. We really like Wilderness Scout, 80 health, 40 dodge rating. You can't go wrong there. Uh, we also like Outlander's Tenacity, 15% maximum health gain as Endurance Threshold. That is also an excellent buff to our ability to survive. And uh, we do finish up with one point in Raptor, Raptor's Wings. This is just like almost a throwaway. It is 1% more damage, so it is kind of nice. That doesn't matter too much. What does, though, is Focus Fire, where we get the 20% dodge rating debuff. Uh, so enemies can dodge us, are much weaker at dodging us, and also uh, 4 or 5 in Critical Eye for the same for crit vulnerability chance, so enemies can't use crit avoidance against us that is the passives that's most of them too we covered a lot there how about the rotation so 
we're going to use shift almost all of the time until we get to enemies that we want to actually focus on and kill. That can be a lot of things that can be um, the objective in a monolith that can be the um, exiled mages that can just be a rare that you want to kill or a group that you want to make sure that you kill most of them. But when it's not those things, you're just going to shift through, let things come and chase you and they're going to, they're going to run into your umbral blades and they're going to get wrecked. You sync strike though, when you do want to kill tanky enemies or packs, you sync strike at them or near them. If they're dangerous, you can do it to the side and then you shift out and that will cause all of the shadow daggers to go just crazy and cause a ton of damage. Uh, in extended fights, use your smoke bomb in order to get smoke blades, but also a bunch of damage reduction. And decoy is also available to you. It's on spec, but still a taunt if you need it. If mana is low, avoid using sync strike for one or two shifts. Make sure that you get your mana back that way because it's going to give you back, back mana every time you do it, not just from shift, but also from shadow cascade, those nodes that we talked about. Mapping is pretty similar, as um, similar to what the regular rotation is. There's not much really to, to talk about there. And bossing is mostly just sync strike, shift, sync, sync strike, shift out. Use smoke bomb as much as you can so that you get that extra buff, both offensive and defensive. As far as gear goes, we talked a little bit about some of the things that we want in here, which are uh, we want smoke weaver, we want Wings of Argentus for that 25 or that 20 percent less damage taken while moving. That's very powerful for us. The haste on hit is a nice extra guarantee. We're going to get haste. We'd have it up almost all the time anyway. If you can get a one LP on this and put Fizz Pen Pen with Shadow Daggers on it, you are going to have a very very rare item. If you get a one LP Wings of Argentus, that's very rare in itself. If you get that, or if, or if you get a Fizz Pen with Shadow Daggers, amazing. But increased health is also really good here. Um, regular health and vitality are nice as well, even dexterity, but I wouldn't waste it on that. I would be trying to get the Fizz Pen with Shadow Daggers or maybe a tier 7 increased health. Smoke Weaver, if you can get a, even a 1 LP, but especially a 2 LP and get Crit Multi and Melee Fizz on it, that's going to be an awesome, awesome item. The other item we have is a Katana. Great Crit Strike Multi on this, and then add additional Crit Strike Multi and Melee Fizz damage. Dodge rating on this is also really powerful. That Between that, Smoke Weaver's added dodge, which is huge by the way it's one of the reasons we actually are taking this you have that extra dodge rating and then the increased dodge rating on a katana it's going to be really hard to hit you the other um i should actually go to end game there we go my, my bad we don't need the, the rocket's claws on the most builds it's going to be very rare but you do want a uh sy an, um, excuse me a siphon of anguish for your leech for move speed for elemental resistance and also more damp more melee damage this is a very strong ring that's very easy to get legendary potential on and so you actually can get three lps i've dropped three lps of this you get one with throwing damage health and crit avoidance you've gotten an absolutely amazing ring now something to talk about here i've mentioned at melee and um, throwing our tags for shadow daggers which means you can scale both your added melee and added throwing, which is why we have it here. So you can scale a lot of added damage on this build. You're going to want to scale added damage. You're going to want to scale crit critical strike multiplier, and you're going to want to scale fizz pen with shadow deckers. Those are basically the only way to scale this along with increased damage. There are no multipliers in skill trees that affect it. So this is how you have to do it. You're also going to get that on your idols. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but fizz pen with shadow deckers on your idols is excellent. As far as the rest of the gear, there's not a lot of crazy stuff in here. It's kind of what you'd expect. Health, you know, get your movement speed, throwing damage, shred armor where you can. Most of what you would basically expect. This is also a point where I should mention, I didn't at the beginning, which I should have, that some of this stuff is a little bit subject to change. This is not including some of the new implicits that are going to be added. They will be added into the Max Roll um, article very soon probably well actually before this video is even released or around the same time it is so go check that out and see what has been adjusted it will be fairly similar but there will probably be some changes in there okay um let's also talk about the low life setup so this is also new to it it's something we've been tracking for a while we knew the low life setup was really good i was playing the low, low life setup for quite a while I, we didn't add it because we didn't know what was going to happen to it we assumed it was going to get heavily nerfed Guess what? It wasn't. Not even a little bit. So this is still really, really strong. This is the highest EHP setup you can get for Shadow Daggers. It's a about a double EHP, I believe, if I remember correctly, after I did the EHP calcs on that. It does give up some damage, but if you want to push high corruption, 
this is the setup you should be using. You're going to need a last steps of the living. You're going to need an exsanguinous and you're going to need an experimental um, gloves with the, the health loss per second, ward gain per second for missing health. And you're also going to need a cleaver solution, which means you're going to have to scale strength instead of dexterity, which is why there is some damage loss on this. But it is worth it if you want to do the really high end stuff. That's most of what you need. You're also going to want a twisted heart of Ukairos because you can get so much strength and increased health off of this. Not necessary, but a big, big boost to your EHP. The last thing you're going to want to do if you do that is add the death's door passive. This is going to give you, I believe five points can go, eight points can go. This is going to give you 24% reduced damage taken while at low health. That is all of the time for this build. It's a literal low life setup. So that's what you're going to want to take. And that's a huge part of your EHP benefit. Uh, if you want to see exactly how to switch out your passive to do that, just click on this planner. It will bring you to the planner, the actual planner on max roll, and then go to the passives on the low life setup. And then you can see exactly how we've changed the passive tree. All right, let's talk about blessings and idols. And then we're basically done here. So for blessings, we are looking at Grand Echo Salarum to offload our void res resistance. That makes things a lot easier for us, as does Grand Bastion of Divinity. That will take care of our lightning resistance. We want Grand Survival of Might for crit avoidance. Add this with the tier five on the ring and you are crit capped. And then we want Grand Bulwark of the Tundra and Obsidian for big, a big armor benefit. This is a huge, um, huge improvement to our armor. We don't have a ton of armor on the normal setup. We do have a lot of armor on the low life setup, but even that will significantly benefit from this, especially Grand Body of Obsidian, since it's going to uh, multiply all of that armor. All right, that is the blessing. All the rest of the stuff on here is just uh, for farming it's not super valuable unless you're going for something very specific and you're trying to to boost it you don't need to worry too much about that but if you want to know the what we think are the best ones generally this is where you can look all right and then the idle setup so you can run a mix of physical pen with shadow daggers and increased health or you can run um, all four of one of the other depending on whether you want more damage or you want more survivability it's really up to you. These are both really great options. And for suffix is elemental resistance until you have cap and then armor shred uh, effect would be the other suffix, which will just make armor shred even more insane. This build's already insane with armor shred. So that's even better. As far as your um, other idols, they're all stout idols with double health to absolutely stack your health as far as you possibly can. All right, we've also got build scaling, but we've mostly covered this. Uh, flat melee throwing damage, insanely good. You want a lot of that. Same thing with Fizz Pen with Shadow Daggers. You need some increased mana regen, at least two tier fives on your gear. If you have more than that, even better. Crit multi, another really important thing. If you get a really good Laraka's Claws, that's legendary with multiple affixes, you can get the right affixes that we show in the best in slot section. You can add that to the build too, but not need it. Uh, chance to shred on, on armor and hit. This build is going to have an insane amount of that, so no worries there. And then dex and increase uh, damage. As far as defenses go, we talked about evasion and wings of Argentis. The um, damage reduction while moving, very, very powerful. We talked a good bit about dodge. You're going to have so much dodge in this build that um, under most circumstances is pretty much close to cap, 85%. So... Good luck getting hit, basically. You've got dot damage reduction from Evasion, Prolonged Demise, Wings of Argentist, um, and Crimson Storm. The Silver Shrouds are guaranteed dodges. Use those strategically when you can. Um, you can particularly get that on Smoke Bomb. It's very easy to use that strategically to avoid a big attack. We do get some glancing blow out of this build, but we don't push it too hard. But when you are in a Smoke Bomb, sh uh, Dust Shrouds will basically cap you. So use that also to your advantage. Um, as far as armor mitigation, we do get quite a bit, but not as much as um, we used to, but still pretty good, especially if you go low life. We stack health. We have plenty of leech from Siphon of Anguish and that passive node. And then we do have chill and frailty built in there. We do have a cleanse. We do have capped crit avoidance, and then we do get some endurance. Um, okay, that is defense, that is damage, and that covers everything. When this goes live, we probably won't have the 1.0 loot, loot filters yet. This will still be the, the quote-unquote old ones. There's not a lot of difference between them, just some adjustments for MG and COF. We will have those by launch, so keep an eye out for those. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a great time with this build. I hope you have a great time in last epoch. Enjoy the 1.0 launch, and I'll see you all again real soon.